fun and informative podcast all about training working dogs? Look no further than the LWDG Pod Dog. This weekly show is hosted by me, Joe Parrott, founder of the Ladies Working Dog Group, and I chat to experienced trainers and experts in the field who will give you helpful tips and advice. Whether you're just getting started or you've been working with dogs for years, this podcast will have something for you. So pull up a chair, pour yourself a cup of coffee and tune into LWDG Pod Dog. Let us help you build a better bond with your best friend. Hello and welcome to another episode of LWDG Pod Dog. My name is Joe Parrott. I'm the founder of the Ladies Working Dog Group. And joining me for this week's podcast is the amazing Claire Denya. Many of you will know her as the group expert within the LWDG. She's also a behavioural trainer and a gun dog trainer. Hi, Claire. How are you? Hi, Joe. I'm very well, thank you. So... Today's podcast is all about how dogs changed your life. Um, I know for more, many people they've got a story that relates to how the introduction of dogs has, has really changed their life or taken it on a different path. But let's talk about your journey. So how did dogs become so important to your life? Yeah, so I did grow up with dogs, but not traditional gun dogs. So I grew up with a small papillon and also with Dalmatians <laughs> so none of which I now have <laughs> although they're still in the family um when John and I got together he had a black Labrador who at the time was just over a year of age um she wasn't particularly well trained she was a lovely pet um but that was it and that really started my love of Labrador breed um specifically but also my journey into gun dog breeds and when we lost her um we waited a year to get our next labrador and that was when we got indy um indy's almost 10 now so that's how long ago that was and that was when i started my journey into gun dog training that's fantastic so you over a decade of working with gun dogs um what is it about the dogs that helps you? Because obviously um, your particular story or your particular circumstances are, are very unique. Tell us a little bit about, uh, about your general background and how dogs sort of fit into that. Yeah. So um, when I first left school, I was training to be a horse riding instructor. It was just, that was the given. I was always going to work with horses. It wasn't even debatable. Um, I actually, when I was studying and working at the stables, had an accident completely unrelated to horses. Um, it was a health and safety thing. Um, and that sort of brought that to quite a grinding halt quite quickly. And I fell into hairdressing and I fell in love with hairdressing. I, I really did. Um, I did an apprenticeship and, and I just adored it. I was diagnosed with lupus when John and I were together. And I was told very early on in my diagnosis that within seven years, I would be reliant on a walking stick, um, would have mobility problems. And that obviously for me said, hang on a minute, this is going to bring an end to my hairdressing career, which I, which I absolutely loved. I would end in L'Oreal Colour Trophy. You know, I was competing at a high level um, in that in that sort of arena. And I was absolutely devastated, but I didn't want to lose that industry. So I ended up opening my own salon, thinking that, well, if I can't do hairdressing anymore, if that's the long term prognosis, then I will own a salon and develop other people. However, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wasn't cut out for office life was the bottom line. And there was always this draw back to animals, which went back to my time training to be a horse riding instructor, which owning a horse was completely financially out of the, <laughs> out of the, the ball game. That was just not going to happen. And um, as I say, John and I were together and he had his Labrador, Gemma, and it just started some cogs turning in my head and I really enjoyed even back then with her I really enjoyed troubleshooting dog behavior and uh, really enjoyed training her and you know it started right back then and then um 
John and I unfortunately were not able to have children and my dogs are not a substitute for that at all because dogs are dogs um but they did bring something into my life that I didn't have um that nurturing that ability to look after someone something and nurture it and develop it and it kind of like stemmed from there but more so as well um when we got indie I wasn't yet on a walking stick um, <laughs> but it was the being outside with the dogs that brought a whole new element of health to me and the walking was incredibly good for my health and my well-being yeah and I can I can understand that with the dogs playing quite a big part in even today keeping my mental health positive um you know I think when we are highly stressed taking them out and doing half hour if a walk or even half hours training just allows you to escape from that that sort of sadness you feel and escape a little bit from life doesn't it um so obviously you you started with the one dog and then that became two dogs and then that became three dogs yeah um what lifestyle changes have been brought up by the dogs other than you know you say you started walking and there's health implications of that of, of feeling better but what other sort of lifestyle sort of changes started to happen when you had the dogs yeah so obviously there were the health benefits of being active it was keeping the joints mobile and flexible and I felt like I was winning all the time because it's like well the doctor said that I'd be on walking stick by this point and I'm not um <laughs> and I wasn't an office girl so being out with the dogs was amazing John and I it was it was a huge passion of ours training the dogs and we we really got into training the dogs loved it and we were studying dog behavior and dog training but it was still just a hobby. Um, and then after Indy was attacked and had her breakdown, and so many people said to me, that dog's career as a gun dog is over and that dog won't have quality of life. And it, this is gonna sound really strange, but almost I was like, well, hang on a minute. They pretty much said the same thing about me. <laughs> those years ago they were like she's gonna be no good she won't be able to do this she won't be able to do that and I was like I didn't give up on me and I'm not going to give up on this dog either and she had brought Indy Indy will always hold a very special place in my heart a lot of heartache that I went through with my health not having children she was this of course John was but she was this stable thing in my life that I was nurturing and there was no way I was quitting on that dog that was never an option which was how I then I'd been to a lecture with Robert Elaine and I was like this guy I think will help me with my dog and so I called him out and he came and spent six hours with me um and John and dude dude was six months old at that point and um it was him at the end of that behavioral consultation working with me and Indy and John and Dude. And he said, if you guys ever want to change your career, you should be dog trainers. That's your calling. And that was kind of, I blame him. Because <laughs> that was kind of where it went from. That's where it started <laughs> to change what, my life in other ways. <laughs> what a fantastic um, sort of recommendation to have from Robert. Because that, you know, at this point, you were working with one dog to to solve a personal problem that you and the dog were, were sort of facing, for him to see that you had the capability to, to help many other dogs. For those who are listening who are like, what happened to Indy? Do you want to tell everybody quickly what, what happened? Yeah, so she was, unfortunately, bless her heart, it it was one of them things where you just think, how how unfortunate. But she, she had just turned two years of age and she was attacked twice within the space of one week um both times by out of control dogs in a park um neither attack was specifically physically damaging but mentally they really scarred her um one of them this terrier breed basically had hold of her muzzle in its mouth and she was trying to get it off and couldn't get it off i couldn't get it off the owner couldn't get it off um 
And although, I mean, she's still got a scar on her face from that incident, but it wasn't like she needed stitches and, and things like that. But within four weeks from that week where those two incidents happened, um, within one, within four weeks, she became terrified of life. She became fear aggressive towards dogs, understandably, kind of. Um, she became fearful of people that she didn't know. She became fearful of sound. She became sound sensitive. So that was where her gun shyness came in. Um, and she also became afraid of the dark. Um, I couldn't even get her to leave the house. She would just lay on the ground and wet herself. I mean, that's how horrific it was. And it happened so, so quickly. So that's quite a lot of challenges for an experienced handler to mm. face. Um, and at the point, as far as sort of training on a, on a high level, you were quite new to it at that point as well. Yeah, novice. Yeah. 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 So, you know, for you to face that and to have people saying there is no hope, that must have been really, really hard for you because you're, you don't know what you don't know, so you don't know where the answers are. So Rob come in to see you, just just give you a glimmer of hope that there was a way forward with that. Yeah, he 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 spent six hours doing full behavioural consultation and, and showing me how to re-educate her, showing me how to get her to listen to me, showing her, me how to rebuild her confidence and then started the process, which in its entirety was 18 months. But within just a few weeks, we made massive progress. But to get her to be a working gun dog, no longer fearful of all of those things, took 18 months. And that's amazing because loads of people say that a gun shy, a dog, you know, that again, that's the end of it. But and but 18 months isn't, um, although I'm sure it was quite extensive, 18 months is a short amount of time for a dog to to improve his quality of life for the rest of his life. Yeah. Um, and when we look at it in relation to the other sort of things we've been talking about on LWDG pod dog, like rescue dogs and things like that, where people are giving them up after months, not not years, just literally yeah. months. Um so was Indy sort of the the start of a hobby becoming sort of the life changing passion that you have today for dog training? A hundred percent. Indy is the reason that family dog services exists. If it wasn't for her, it wouldn't if it wasn't for her, Rob, it wouldn't be here. Um when we when I was working with her, when John and I were working through all this process with her, we kept saying to each other, how many dogs get given up on? How many dogs are going to rescue? How many dogs are put to sleep? Because owners don't understand that actually these problems can be cured. And I'm not saying that every dog can be 100% cured, but every dog's life can be made better. Every owner's life can be made better. So this huge passion was like growing inside of us to help other people with their dogs because we were like, if we if we can help this dog who's in this much of a state, how many other dogs can we help? So the studying became much more intense <laughs> and uh, we did lots and lots of courses um, and we, we studied everything that we possibly could and we knew that long term, this was going to be something that we would want to do as a career, but it was a really frightening, it was a really frightening idea. John had been working in the same IT company for 24, 25 years. Um, and I had the salon um, and I, I was developing people within the team. And I was like, well, I could edge away from the salon because I'm developing people. People want to grow. And if I step out, they can grow. Um, and then John was basically made redundant. <laughs> and so I said to John, well, it's now or never really, isn't it? So this was back in 2016, Family Dog Services, 2016, Family Dog Services um, started as a full time, as a full time job. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's quite incredible because the, the first Facebook group for LWDG in its very first form started really around the same time so really <laughs> yeah it was it was the end of 2015 the beginning of 2016 so yeah. it, it's sort of like it's interesting to see how the whole industry progressed but that you've almost been there to see as those changes have 
have been made and you know it's not just our organization but the the industry as a whole i think it's gone through quite a lot in seven years yeah. um and seven years for any business um is a long time in relation to the the length of of, of time companies stay open so now that you've sort of made the complete change seven years is enough to say this is a permanent change and and you're absolutely obsessed and I know from the work that you do with with our group that you are absolutely passionate and and forever giving of your um, time your energy your experience tell me more about like learning more about dogs to help transform their lives and owners lives where you've done all that sort of training is it a big thing to you to then impart that knowledge onto others? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, I get quite frustrated when I see people struggling so much with their dogs, knowing that things can be done to help their dogs. And this is why I'm really quite proactive on the groups, like reaching out to people and encouraging people to reach out for help as well. Because like I say, I only have to go back to Indy's story and there are so many stories out there of dogs that are struggling and owners that are struggling and, and they're being told, you know, you can't achieve this, you won't achieve that, move the dog on, you know, all those sorts of things. And I think I find that quite sad and quite upsetting. And so I really want to reach out to people and help them and support them. But also because... I know that for me, my dogs are family. They are family. Like, I know they're dogs. They're not children. <laughs> and I don't call them my fur babies. And I think I may have done years ago, but I don't now. Um, <laughs> I have much more respect for them than that now. <laughs> um, but my dogs mean the absolute flipping world to me. And I know that for a lot of the people that are struggling with their dogs, their dogs are the same. Their dogs are their world. You know, a lot of dogs get treated better than people's children. You know, <laughs> it's like the children get told to get off the sofa and go and do their homework and the dogs don't get told to move. So, you know, <laughs> um, but the what it can do for the owner to achieve things with their dog it can be really uplifting emotionally and mentally and make you feel really worthwhile and that you're doing something amazing. And I always say to people, like, you need to count your little wins. Every win is a little win. You know, it's not just the big stuff that's important. But dogs are not human. And I think we really underestimate how amazing dogs are for changing our lives as well. And like with your story, Joe, with the dogs as well, the difference dogs make to our lives is massively incredible and important. But we can make just as much as a difference to dogs' lives by being understanding and wanting to do what's best for them and learning how to, to do that for the dog. And it's lovely to hear you say about the amount of time you spent researching and learning because it takes somebody with that type of mentality to be open to to finding ways to solve dogs because you know there isn't that you know you always say you train the dog in front of you yeah. and, and with whatever that needs so you can't have one plan in your mind you've got to have many and find the one that suits uh, I think if you've taught us that a hundred and one times <laughs> <Yeah>. but, <laughs> but no it's it is like a really important thing but as much as dogs can bring absolute pleasure and I do understand like I've got children but my attitude with my children with my dogs especially now they live in the house is very much you're my babies you know mm -hmm. you can do what you want which is very very naughty but but they are my thing but also I suppose as as my children get older and they're very independent, I've brought them up to be like that. I've lost the little person who needs me to do stuff with them. So I've got almost, uh, not a standing almost. Do you, you know what I mean? <laughs> the dog's standing and they let me do everything, you know. Uh, but I think as well, people don't realise that when they purchase a dog, you're talking about maybe a eight to fourteen year, if not more, commitment to building a relationship with somebody. Do you find that people get upset because it's not happening all at once? Yeah, people get really upset when 
so if I break it down, like quite often we get people come to puppy training that maybe they're not gun dog breeds, they're just, you know, any other dog breed, um, which is really common. But they come to a puppy class and they think that attending a puppy class once a week for six weeks or whatever is going to train the dog. No. Um, people with gun dog breeds, they tend to then want to delve into, you know, gun dog training, whether it be more for a pet training basis or for gun dog work or competition or whatever. They tend to stay longer, but it, it's getting into people's mind and understanding that training the dog is actually for life, regardless of the breed. It doesn't matter whether it's a gun dog breed or, or whether it's a Frenchie or whatever it is. That dog is learning for life through its interactions with us on a day to day basis. And you need to put that effort in with that dog. You know, and that's really, really important. And I think people really underestimate the time that goes into teaching and educating a dog for life. And it is for life, you know, even when the dog. So a lot of people will come to puppy classes and think that that's it. That's the dog trained. That's just the beginning of it. After that, they're about to go through adolescence. That's going to bring a whole new, <laughs> you know, variety of, of um, not problems, but maybe challenges. Um, and then the dog gets through that and they go into adulthood. And then that brings along more changes in the dog's personality and, and behavior. But they seem to think that if you just attend the puppy course, by the time you finish that after six weeks, that's your training done. Well, that's just the beginning of the training. And the training is for life. It's in the home. It's in the garden. It's with every interaction with the dog. Um, and it's the same if you've got children. It is the same. The children are learning for life. You know, life is an education. And yeah, just as it is for us, it is for the dogs. At 42, I literally still spend time on the phone to my mum saying, what about that? But well, how does this do that? And I think it is that thing, isn't it? You, you're you taking on a commitment that's going to be with you for such a long time that you've got, you've got to be open to the fact of patience as well. It's not going to be a, a quick win. Do you think, though, um, as, a, as a trained and qualified behaviourist, do you think there's a, not a lack of understanding, but a need for people to learn about why their dog behaves the way it does? Yeah, definitely. I think too often people try to humanise the dog and they don't see it from the dog's point of view. They don't see it from the dog's perspective. You know, it's like when people talk about, well, why is my dog sniffing this? Why is my dog doing that? Why is my dog cocking its leg on that? You know, these are dog behaviours and we need to understand them. That doesn't mean that we can't get into a position where we teach the dog appropriate behaviours and actions that are better for us because we don't want our dogs running around our house cocking the legs you know that's not acceptable so house training is one of the first things isn't it for the dogs that live in the home um but yes I, I do I do think people forget that we're working with a different species you know it's an alien let's say an alien you know um we're, we're working with a different species and it and it's educating the dog this is how we live in our world and this is how I'm going to keep you safe and this is how we're going to work together. Um, and it's such a fulfilling relationship. You know, for me, my relationship with my dogs is so unique with every individual dog. They're all they're all individual, all three of them. I train each of them differently. I reward each of them differently. I, I interact with each of them differently. Um, and somebody commented on that once um, recently, very recently. They were out with me and I had Indy and I had Rose and... I don't remember who this was. It was a friend and she was with me with her dog. And um, she's, oh, don't you do it differently with Indy to how you do it with dude? <laughs> uh, no, with Indy and how you do it with Rose. I get confused by my dog's names. And, um, and I said, yeah, I guess I do. But yes, I do because they have different motivations and um, they value different things. So I do talk to them differently and train them differently and reward them differently. But what I get from each dog is very, very different. Each dog brings to my life something very different. I think dogs are one of the, you know, I come from a, uh, a, my past as a child, I was 
horse mad too and I you know the dogs didn't have a look in compared to the horses <laughs> but as I think as I've grown older the, I think dogs are one of the only animal species I can think of where you really do have relationships with very individual like really individual personalities yeah. like horses are all lovely they they are well behaved or they're not and you can tell they tell them apart etc and, and how they react towards you but they're pretty much indifferent and very much quite happy in her doing what they do but dogs are very much like you are my world and yeah. you know they're so i'm sure they can feel love and maybe not a human love but they they definitely feel about us when in a way that no other species i think can and i think that's what makes us all love them so much but then there's also that frustration when we can't seem to to gel with them and it's about building those relationships isn't it yeah yeah a hundred percent like when i look at indie 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 filled a void in my life for a long time and she wasn't a replacement for it and i didn't treat her like a baby so that's not it um, but she filled a void in my life and gave me a new purpose and she helped me with my health. She was the reason behind a new business. You know, she was this, she's massive. She's going to be one of them dogs, you know, that down the line, that horrible down the line, I, I will probably say she was a dog of a lifetime um, <laughs> because of all the, those different aspects. Dude then brought different aspects. He was like the first boy dog that I had owned. Um, and he bought different little things, but he's like a giant lap dog, you know, real cutie. Um, and then Rose has shown me something very different because Indy's really serious. Like Indy's a dead serious dog. She doesn't like affection when she's training. She doesn't like affection when she's working, but in the evening she likes affection, but she's like a proper serious dog and she always looks really serious. And Rose is this fun loving cute character that wants everything to be a game and that's how I've based her training everything's been based on a game like you know and I giggle so much with her and it, it is like it's not it but it is like having three different children personalities in my house yeah you know <laughs> yeah, but the reality of it is being as well whether they're children or whether they're dogs, personalities are personalities and when we grow a, a, a bond and a strong bond and a relationship with anyone whether you know you know I can look at my husband and he'll know what I'm thinking before I do I can yeah. look at my dogs and sometimes I know exactly what they're thinking before they do it's yeah. almost it's almost written in their face or in their, their mannerisms you know from a second what that actually means um so your dogs are made giving you these sort of life-changing career pivots you know and from from one place to another what does the future for you look like? Do you think at this point, ha are dogs going to continue to change your life in a huge way? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so something that I will be exploring with Rose will hopefully be puppies. Never done that before. <laughs> um, that's something I want to explore. I wrote my first book because of Rose, The Life of Rose, the puppy book. So I want to write more books. I want to write more books based on my experiences developing and evolving with my dogs. Um, so that's something in the pipeline for me, um, as well as puppies. <laughs> and I think ultimately, my, my life's not dictated by my dogs. That would be very wrong to say that. But the journey I take with my dogs over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, I think each dog will probably give me something new to work on and something else to challenge me. And I think I will, the business will evolve based on that for sure, without a doubt, whether that be writing books or doing other things. Um, a litter of puppies totally out of my comfort zone I don't know why I'm doing it except I really want to do it um, <laughs> and I just think each dog has inspired me to grow a little bit more so that's going to be really interesting to watch 
and I will be led I will I will let my life I do think I'm a real great believer in things happen for a reason some things are really rubbish and you would rather they didn't but other things are really amazing but I do think things do happen for a reason even if you can't see that reason at the time and all of the changes in my life health reasons and things like that health things Everything has brought something amazing to my life. No matter how rubbish that thing has seemed at the time, something amazing has generally come out of it. May not always be the thing the thing that I thought I wanted, but something amazing has always happened. So I'm going to go with the flow on it. And I think that's the best way to look at it. Like literally, you know, before we started recording, I was saying to you, you know, but like I spend quite a lot of my time video editing now. I never saw that for my future. I never saw the LWD <laughs> in my future. I certainly didn't see the friendships like they, I have with you and with other ladies. Yeah. I didn't see those things in my future. You know, they, dogs can sometimes be the connector, I think. If you have a passion for a dog, for a sport, it, it will automatically connect you to other people. You would never have, have maybe had in your life had you yeah. not had that dog? So I think there's something truly bonding about dogs that, that builds communities. Um, it, it's really true. And I have to say, for me, finding the Ladies Working Dog Group and you and all the amazing ladies I've met through that has brought me some really special friendships that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have found if I didn't have my dogs. Oh, well, me too. Oh, so I, true. I, I, I class you. I class you as one of my best friends. Most people know that. Uh, you know, there's other ladies who are, I just think I would never. And like going to the game fair and seeing all those ladies come up to me in, in real life when you know we've just been through COVID and everything else. And then it was like meeting a friend with every single one of them. And I think again, that's just something that the the dogs have built our community, and our community has built these friendships. Um. Most people will know how to find you, Claire. If they're in our group, they'll know exactly where to find you. But if somebody's listening who's outside of the group, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, so I'm very accessible on Facebook. <laughs> um, through Family Dog Services, um, uh, email, website, Facebook, Instagram. I'm not so good with Instagram messages, so I'll probably stick any messages to Facebook and website because, uh, yeah, that's how I go. But yeah, Family Dog Services is, is the business name or contact me personally, Claire Denya. Well, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for doing this podcast with us and sharing your story and being quite honest and open about that. For anybody who wants to get hold of Claire, obviously you can do it in the channels that she's mentioned. She also has quite a lot of masterclasses in our in our masterclass library that you can check out. There's some blogs, you know, there's plenty of places where you can definitely find the information about Claire and the way she trains. So thank you all for listening to this week's LWDG Pod Dog. We'll be back next week with another episode in between. Have fun training your dogs and we look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you for listening to LWDG Pod Dog with me, Joe Parrott. Now we all know training a dog takes time, energy and patience, but our lives can be really, really busy. Don't worry, the LWDG has got you covered. Join us for our free planning workshop where we'll show you how to use short 10 minute training sessions each day to fast forward your dog's education. Our experts have years of experience in training dogs and will help you get started on the right foot. Register now and start making progress with your furry friend today. Go to our Facebook page, The Ladies Working Dog Group, and click on the pinned post. Or visit www.thelwdg.com. Thank you.